Muncher. Hello, welcome to Muncher Movies Game of Thrones Wagers. How does it work? It's pretty simple. We start with a thousand Muncher coins. We have episode bets that get settled at the end of every episode. We have death wagers that get settled every time a character dies. And some season-long bets that get settled as the season progresses. We'll also be opening up these wagers to you, our good listeners. You can weigh in on a wager through comments on YouTube or our social media platforms or our website. We'll keep score of the wagers as they happen and the winners stand to get some muncher goodies. So Vikram, ready to get into it? Let's do it. I think I had a good week, man. You had a surprisingly good week? Yeah, yeah. How does it feel to win something for a change? Well, pretty good, especially at this because I've historically just been really bad at wagers and bets. So I feel pretty good, man. Let's, let's dive in. Okay, why don't we go for the simple one first, my victory first, which is how many character deaths? That's not your victory. Well, you had under two. I did have under two, and one character died. Which character? Misande. And a very important named character named Are you you talking about Rhaegal? Of course I'm talking about Rhaegal. Dude, come on, man. Wait, wait, wait. You essentially had one death, and we had more than one character death. No, well, are we counting dragons in this now? We have to. It's a named character. Well, I feel like if you would have been on my seat, you would have just been very aggressively pushing back on this. Perhaps. But right now, <laughs> I'm pushing the other way. I don't know, man. I don't think we can count Rhaegar as a character here. Did we count Viserion? Oh, no, that was season seven. If Drogon died, we'd have to count that as a named character death. We probably wouldn't with her. That's the reason we didn't have... Like, if Ghost died, would we count that? We wouldn't. Because we would have had these guys on our death wagers or our seasonal wagers in some way. And we didn't. We just completely ignored the animals of Game of Thrones. <laughs> we, all, we messed up. That's not, yeah, that's we not messed my up, fault. But, but now is not the time to rectify that goof up. We also, just need to keep powering through. Mikram, it's, it's not so much about the letter of the law. It's the intent of the law. You uh, know what I mean? It's, and the, the, intent... it's the shut the hell up with it. No, well, the intent... Think about what you feel when a named character Dude, dies. Dude, you, you're harping on for 30 Muncher Coins really strong <laughs> right now. It's 30 Muncher Coins, it's not a small bet. Just give me a win, dude. Just give me the win. You, I can't give you a win. You won a lot this week. Yeah, in, including this. This is a heavy size. This is a heavy portion of what I won. So. You know I have firm standing here. It's about what you, you not, feel. You do not. You're pretending to have firm Think standing. about what you feel when a named Jesus. character dies. Did you feel that when Rhaegal died? You know what, brother? Be honest with me. This is the first time. This is the first time in our entire friendship where your bananas is coming to the fore. <laughs> How front dare and you? center. How dare you've you? Never been, you've never been this this gamandi, if I may. It's principle. It's not principle. It, it's actually nothing. It's just 30 bunch of coins and you're just being a soul loser. Fine. Take it. Take yes. it and go. Woohoo. How dare you disregard Rhaegar like this? Rest in peace, Rhaegar. Rest in peace, Rhaegar. Rest in peace knowing that Vikram does not think of you <laughs> as a main character. Speaking of, dude, that guy died pretty quickly, man. Like three straight shots and he was out. Yeah, three magical shots, by the way. One of which was, like, to the throat. Yeah. That was really naughty, <laughs> like man. perfect aiming from your on. Anyway, so the first one goes to me. 30 Muncha coins, name character deaths. Well done. The next one we had was how many F-bombs we might see. And a very, very, very surgical bet that I placed here was three and under. How many did we have? We had three. No way. Yes. What? We had three F-bombs in this episode. So I get another nice 20 coins to my kitty. How are you doing this, man? How are you just this, getting this it on the head? This is exactly what I feel like. Every other week? Every, every week. This is just... Uh, Can we get to one where I win yet? Yeah, we will eventually. Uh, but Wait, if, not yet? Nope. Just before that, another bet we placed was, uh, does Euron propose in this episode? Come on, dude. He was on one knee and Gendry proposed. That has to give me like at least something. No, no. See, Somebody was on one knee and then Gendry proposed. There's like some Wait, correlation. Euron was in the knee, yeah. But you know what the problem is? Uh, you asked for a 2-to-1 odd here. Because it was so unlikely. If you wouldn't have asked for the 2-to-1 odd, I would have given you this this bullshit explanation you have about Gendry proposing and someone being on a knee. <laughs> no, you wouldn't But have. just because you had 2-to-1 odds there, and it's just 10 coins, man. You, you didn't give me coins. Regal. You wouldn't have given me shit. Yeah. But it's fine. I lost that one fair and square. Euron did not propose. Although she does claim that uh, she's uh, bearing his child. Smart she's, cookie. She, every episode, Cersei's just like weaving this whole pregnant thing. She's definitely not pregnant, man. She's not right in the head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that <laughs> and it's a late realization. Yeah, well, no, no, we knew that like season two onwards, I guess. Okay, the next one I know I win, which is, is wildfire part of the plan? Does someone mention wildfire? Yeah. And uh, nobody does. Nobody does, very surprisingly, and uh, uh, yeah, 
take take 20 coins man take i'll it. take that 20 coins very gladly and also it goes in line with what i thought this episode would be which was mostly filler and this episode was quite filler initially but then it kind of went off the rails and you know it's not even initial right i think the like the first 55 minutes of this episode yeah, was filler yeah. it's just the last 10 15 minutes where just shit just started going down basically as soon as regal got like arrowed in the face yeah and then and then started beyond that they, they lost sense of geography of pacing of everything and then just we don't talk about that anymore vikram shall we move on so pissed off man yeah let's move on uh the next one was something along the lines of the previous one in terms of some does someone mention ballista or is ballista past part of the plan and it was pretty heavily part of the plan so ballista in the show they refer to it as just like a scorpion the scorpion arrows that that can shoot down dragons or in this case just just completely destroy a fleet of ships. I have to say, did someone actually mention them? Oh, are we going into technicalities for 10 coins? We get going into technicalities of someone mentioning them. I don't care if it's a thousand it's coins. It's part of the plan, right? It's still part of the plan. It's about the principle. Did someone <laughs> mention it? Or is it part of the plan? We we went with the same we went to the same bet as we did for Wildfire. I know they shot it a bunch. <laughs> 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 but they didn't really address it, but fair enough. 10 bunch of coins to you. you know I should have done 20 for this. If we did 20 for Wildfire, we should have done 20 for Scorpion Rockets. Yeah, but it seemed likely, you know. I get it, I get it. I'll happily lose those 10 coins. I'm more interested in the death wagers here because uh, a little uh, little well-known character named Misande popped it in this episode. Yeah, yeah. And I remember placing a very unique bet which was that the show would subvert our expectations and let Grey Worm live and Miss Sande die. Hmm. And I'm halfway there. You are halfway there. I feel like, I feel like Grey Worm's going to die too, though. Then it would be a wash. But for now, I will gladly take the 10 Muncher coins. Yeah, you can, you can take them. And I wish it was more because it's, it's an unexpected one. At least 10 Muncher coins feel real sweet. It's, I wouldn't say unexpected, but unexpected at this point in the season for sure. Come on, it is unexpected in the sense like when they foreshadowed the Grey Worm, Missandei, like see the Beaches of Nath conversation. Yeah. Before the Battle of Winterfell, you thought Grey Worm was going to die. And if Grey Worm died, then Missandei would survive for sure. I, what I took away from that interaction was one of them is definitely dying. Not in terms of who it is, but either Missandei or Grey Worm. Well, now I hope it stays one of them because I stand again. Another 10 bunch of coins. Yeah, you do. But I still feel like Grey Worm's getting offed, man. Like, he has literally nothing to live for. He's going to sacrifice himself or just become... He's just going to do what Jorah did, basically. No, I think the tragedy of Missandei's death only stays real if Grey Worm's still alive. That's oh, when so he really feels, feels the pain. it. He feels the pain. That's what the show is all about. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the bets that we want to place for this upcoming episode. Now, firstly, this episode, apparently, according to Amelia Clark, is going to be even more cray-cray than episode three, which I find hard to believe. Well, it's going to be more visible, hopefully. Yeah, it's going to be in the daylight, which is really exciting to most <laughs> fans. So, this episode demands a lot of interesting bets, given where we are at the end of episode four. People are on the move. People are heading back to King's Landing. Khaleesi is, is in full Mad Queen mode and is pissed off and going towards a dragon, I assume. But there's a bunch of ballistas and scorpions on top of the Red Keep. So where are we? What, what do you think we should be betting on? First things first, I mean, I think it's obvious how many on-screen named character deaths. Yeah, I think that's a pretty standard and pretty applicable bet for this episode. Where are you at? E, I don't know, man. This is the one, dude. This is a make or break episode. Yeah, yeah. They're going to kill some people. Firstly, do you think they're definitely going to kill some people? I agree. But do you think this um, this whole, you know, the last war that they're, they're going for, right? Do you think that's going to just be the entire episode? Like, we know the guy who's directing this episode is a guy who's directed The Battle of Winterfell and and all the battle episodes, basically. Hard Home, Battle of the Bastards, Bastards yeah. Long so, Night. So we know that this is going to be like a fully fleshed battle episode. And usually in these episodes, uh, it's, it's end-to-end battle, mostly. And then it's... I don't know about that. I mean, the previous episodes... That wasn't the case. The Long Night, episode three of the Battle of Winterfell was unique, which was only battle. So my vote would actually be that it's closer to like a Battle of the Bastards, where the battle is only a chunk of the episode and there's a before and after. But the battle is 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 done within the episode, right? My question was, do you think the battle is going to spill over to the, the sixth episode? Oh, no, no way. I think Game of Thrones has this long history of the penultimate episode being like the crazy, crazy episode. Yeah. And the last episode of the season being the consequences. In this case, it would be the season finale. Right. So I think the battle would have to be over within the episode for maximum gut punch. Interesting. So so whoever, whichever name character is going to die is pretty much going to get offed in this next episode unless they subvert expectations <laughs> which they've been you know interestingly good at this season for better or for worse 
Yeah, I kind of feel you, man. Okay, uh, let's do a standard under over here. Yeah. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you a. I'll take an over four. How about that? Locked. Locked. Thirty coins. Let's ramp it up, dude. We only have two episodes to go. Yeah, I feel like, and I feel like this next episode is going to be the the like a lot of a lot of settling will happen post this episode. Plus, you won a lot this week, so I think it's time to put some coins on the line. All right, so. Over four, which just to clarify means four and over. Oh, getting desperate, yeah. are you? Not I'll desperate. give you four and over. You just, know what? Just, I just saw your attitude uh, when we were settling bets <laughs> earlier, so I just want to be clear. I'll give you four and over. I actually have under four for thirty muncher coins. Oh, okay. Which is pretty aggressive, but yeah. you know what? I like I like being the underdog sometimes. It feels so much sweeter when you win. Okay, so I'll take four and over for thirty muncher coins for named character deaths in this next episode. Okay. Now that we've established some rules about name characters and non-name characters, it seems like Drogon, dear Drogon, <laughs> is not a name character according to you. All right, he is yeah. according to me, Regal, rest in peace. Do you think Drogon's going to make it past this episode? You know what? Just because they've offed Viserion, obviously, in the previous season, and the way they just killed Rhaegal, I think, I think that, was, that was a way for them to show that dragons are not the be-all, end-all of winning a war. And because of that, I feel like Drogon's going to survive. You think it's going to survive? Yeah. <sighs> this is tough. I am leaning towards Drogon surviving this episode, but I think he might not survive the show. I'm willing to make this an episode bet if you'll give me the next episode to make up for it as well. So I'll take Drogon not surviving, but I get the next two episodes. Ooh, that's tricky. You know why? Because they could just as well show Drogon surviving the battle but severely wounded and then just dying in episode six trying a natural death yeah like oh my god dying of his wounds he's done his job he may go peacefully types that's gonna piss me off if that's how it if we place this this particular wager and that's how it unfolds the thing is i'm holding on to this idea that magic ends at the end of the show somehow yeah not like all of it but like the big magic and dragons and that uh red comet or whatever they were supposed to signal the coming of magic right so given how dragons have been going away recently and I, the walls I, down and the walls down agreed. So, yeah, let, let me have let me have Drogon dying, and uh, I, I get to I get the next two episodes. Okay, but but the situation that I just unfolded in front of you, if it if it happens like that, then it kind of come on, that's so unlikely. That's the most likely. Okay, you know what? I'm happy to make that the exception. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a fun episode. Okay, Drogon dies an unnatural death. Thirty muncher coins. I say yes. All right, that's a lock. So I'm I'm saying that he's going to survive at least the next episode, which is the the main battle. And you're saying he's going to die an unnatural death either in the next episode or the episode after that. Fair enough. 30 muncher coins, that's locked. Next, I want to move on to something that was very abrupt in this previous episode, which was Jamie leaving. Are we betting on whether he loves Brienne? Because my vote is yes. Yeah, no, that's pretty evident. Uh, I I want to place a wager on whether we think Jamie's going to kill Cersei or die with Cersei. Oh, and interesting. That's been the big question this episode. I'm very curious to see where you're at with this. I am on the side of him dying with Cersei, or or basically he placed that oath. Actually, I'm going to hold that oath close to my chest after we place the wager. Wait, there's an oath. <laughs> But I think I think Jamie's irrespective not... of an oath, I'll take kill Cersei. Interesting. So, so you're saying he's going to kill Cersei? Do you, do you, you think a... he's going to King's Landing just to die with Cersei? I think he's going to kill King's Landing to sort of just not kill Cersei, but just be be by her side. There might be some washes here. Like I don't know if he has some other magical plan, but of if course. he's if he's anti Cersei, that's good enough, right, for me? Like if he's, he's fighting gone, against Cersei. He's yeah. fighting against yeah, yeah, Cersei. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm against Cersei then. Okay, cool. You can pick the number. I'm happy with uh, any amount. Uh, this one's kind of vague, um, and also, I don't know how it's going to pay up. You know what? Let's do something unique. Let's place 15 muncher coins. Oh, we're going into the five. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Whatever it takes to get you to make stupid bets. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lock, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, let's move on. Okay, while we're talking about the end of Cersei, do you think it'll happen in episode five? I don't know, man. I just, the way they've built up Cersei as the main boss villain now, I I won't be surprised to see Cersei coming to, or Cersei's character coming to an end in episode six and not, not in episode five. Speaking of the boss villain thing, by the way, I heard a YouTuber, Nerd Rotic, say that with killing the Night King, it's like they've killed Satan and now want us to care about who's president, <laughs> which is so true. That is true, yeah. And now I guess the question is like, do they kill off the president and is episode six just a pure like closure kind of thing? 
I I don't think they'll kill off Cersei in this episode because what is episode six going to be? It's eighty minutes. If you told me episode six was you know twenty minutes, then it could just be like a wrap up. But they need to have some stakes for the final episode. So I'm definitely a no here. Are you? Yeah, I'm a no too. I I don't think Cersei is going to die. If if she dies next episode and everything is sorted in terms of their enemies and they just try to flesh out John and Danny in episode six, I'll be pretty pissed off. But we think Cersei is going to die. So that just leaves episode six. Yeah. I guess we'll save it for next week's. Well, no, that actually, actually, this might be an interesting wager too, because we both think she's going to die in episode six, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then maybe you can talk about who's going to kill Cersei. Yeah, let's do that. So it doesn't need to apply to the next episode. But no. um, who who do you think? Who's who's going to kill her? There's, there's a certain someone on her way to King's Landing to finish off a list. Yeah, I think and, I think that's the strongest candidate. And clearly, I think Jamie's in the mix based on the previous wager. Well, do you think he's going to kill her? Because you think he's against her. But do you think he's going to be the one who kills her? Well, there's the whole Valencar prophecy. That's Tyrion's true. in the mix too, as a result. And Tyrion's, Tyrion's just had this steady upward growth chart in terms of hate hating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So agree with the last episode. Okay, why don't we do one of those bets? Uh, this can be for the next two episodes, but why don't we do one where we pick one and it's a wash if we don't get it right? Yeah, just to be clear, we might be wrong. Cersei might get off in the next episode, but this is valid for the next two episodes. I think it's going to be Arya. Yeah, green eyes. Green eyes, list. On her way to King's Landing, supposedly alone with Clegane. I, I, yeah, I think it'll be Arya. This is tough for me because, you know, Jamie has been the candidate for so long. But he was the candidate back when it would be actually exciting and subversive. Right? Because Jamie, until the end of Season 7, was so pro Cersei. Cersei was his addiction. Now it's like so obvious that Jamie's going to be the one to do it. Can I take not Arya? No, you cannot. I suffered enough for that once before. It's not happening. <laughs> By the way, any listeners, like whoever we pick, if you guys have any other predictions, feel free to wager against us. We're happy to take any position once we lock something in. Um, I'll go Jamie. I think that's... Interesting. S- not Tyrion? most obvious. I can't even say with the showrunners anymore, man. Like, you know what? I- I'll switch. I'll go Tyrion. <laughs> okay. Because I just remembered... Uh, so Tyrion's a lock. Let's do let's do twenty mancha coins. Sure, let's do twenty. Uh, do you remember the behind the scenes about why they chose Arya to be the one to kill the Night King? I don't remember the why. I remember they they said that they planned for it. Yeah, the sad part about the why is mainly because it would be exciting and unexpected. Ugh. So now I'm thinking the same thing with Jamie. Like Jamie is too obvious, so maybe yeah. it's gonna be Tyrion. So I actually already feel bad about my bet now. Now that you said the that. thing with Arya, I feel I I I would never have wagered Arya because. How much can she do? Like, there's, like she's already contributed too much to the but closure. Then, but then also they're just they're just taking stupid step after stupid step. So I won't be surprised if it goes either way. Honestly, so one thing one thing that we know is that George R. R. Martin has told these guys what the major sort of beats are going to be in terms of like the plot twists and and all of that. You really think Arya will kill the Night King in the novels? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Everything everything that we've seen from a major plot point is as is that's what George R. R. Martin said he said the only thing that differs in the books or will differ in the books and the show is going to be what the secondary characters do mm-hmm. and like how the story evolves in terms of how someone gets somewhere what someone does in terms of secondary characters mostly but the major beats are going to be the same so so whatever we see in terms of major character deaths or major plot point that's exactly what George R. R. Martin envisioned so Arya does kill the Night King in the books as well I don't even want to think about it. I, You know what? Okay, let's just move on. We're locked on that one, right? Yeah, 20 bunch of coins. You say Tyrion. I say Arya killing Cersei. Let's get to the thing that we've been building up to for like five seasons. Will we see a Clegane Bowl in this episode? I actually do, man. That's clearly why Sanders on his way to King's Landing. Unfinished business is what he mentioned. And he literally has nothing else to do. See, the reason this could be a wager is whether it will happen in this episode or not. I'm actually leading towards yes as well. Because why else is Sander heading there? Yeah. And if the Clegane Bowl is not a part of this episode, then it would be weird to save it as like the final thing. It's not worth like the final episode of Game of Thrones. Right. So I'm a yes here as well. No bet. You know, but what I'm annoyed about is that Sander's character, if you think about it, doesn't need to have that final face-off with Gregor anymore. He's 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 overcome all of all of that, that part of his life. He's he's done and dusted with it. Why even show his character going to King's Landing? Yeah, wasn't he a monk for a while? What happened to that? I mean, now he's believing, he believes the fire god, he was against fire all his life. Like, he's been through so much, he's fought so many things. He should just 
retire and chill like he shouldn't even care about anything anymore and say yes to that maiden who was flirting with him <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for once yeah i'm not a, the biggest fan but you know what the mountain needs to go somebody needs to off him so it's either going to be arya or it's going to be hey it could be grey worm now to could be a bloody dragon dude for, no 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 cuz grey worm has like the most reason although not yeah. against the mountain hey you think grey worm might kill cersei oh yeah he has he, reason to he hate has, her yes cause yeah uh that would be subversive I swear if if you and I both lose that Cersei bet to a grave or <laughs> that'd be sad. Okay, let's move on to something that's related to Danae. Danae? Danae. Is that your John? Danae. Danae. Yeah, it it's my John. I mean, it's an okay John. It's it's once I confirm that it's John, <laughs> I can tell that it's John. <laughs> okay, so do you think Danae is going to burn Varys? She promised she would if he betrays her. He betrayed her. Treason is mental, dude. He's already betrayed her. <laughs> That's it's what a I was crime. thinking. I was like, he hasn't done anything yet. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's thought a crime. crime. Okay. Yeah, she's like big sister, big brother. Okay. Interesting. Do you think, now that you said that, do you think Varys was responsible for or had a hand in the ambush, the Euron ambush? The Dragonstone fleet? Yeah, I've been hearing that theory. I, you know, I'm afraid that the show is not complicated enough to need someone to be responsible for the ambush. Yeah. Like they might just be like and then Euron is waiting. Yeah, yeah. Without old school Game of Thrones style actually defending it. I agree. So I actually don't th- I actually think that's where the show is at. Like they don't need someone to be responsible. No, just to add to that, I completely agree with you. And just to add to that, if you think about it, up until the five seasons, the first five seasons or so, they had the books in terms of material to go off of. So they knew plot points and they knew how those plot points were connected and within those connections they had good writing to go off of in terms of heavy dialogues and lines and scenes and stuff like that but then if you notice ever since the books ended and the show continued they were literally going from plot point to plot point yeah totally i mean what was this plot point this plot point was regal dies yeah. and then they just made it happen yeah they just made it happen in the in the most oversimplified stupidest way possible so i think Vikram, that, can, let me just pause you there because yeah, i want to look sorry. forward to the next episode i'm sorry man I'm sorry. and the past two episodes have incited a lot of the kind of discussion we're having right now yeah so you know what i don't think varys is responsible and i hope he is because that would mean at least that the show is kind of similar to what it used to be as for the actual wager does danny burn varys i think this is inevitable so i'm i'm actually on the side of yes in terms of it happening in this episode Okay, um I I I'll go the other side gladly because I think that if this was to happen it was it'll be something that happens in episode 6 as opposed to episode 5 cuz in my mind now because just given the cues that we have like the director and the battle scene and all it's just going to be completely focused on the battle. Do you know you're effectively hedging your uh, on-screen deaths by saying no to this, right? Which I'm open to. That's great. That's one less death that will happen in episode 5. Oh, as in the name character that's. Dude, you're way ahead of me by right now. <laughs> no, yeah. when it gets to wagers. I'm, I'm just going question to question and you're talking some scientific level shit. So, <laughs> so I'm, okay. I'm going to say Varys not dying. Yeah, I'll I'll say Varys not, monster death. Not Danny not burning Varys. Wait, wait, wait. If if he dies non-burnt then I lose? Yeah, of course. The question is does Danny burn Varys? If Varys dies to an arrow. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. I'm 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 in favor of Varys dying like somehow. But, but that's not the question. Yeah, but what if she like burns him slightly and then throws him off the edge of a cliff that's counted okay does danny kill varus then dude Ooh. part of the subversion might just be that she wants to kill him and then he dies anyway or some shit yeah so that's not in my favor of course not i then i'm going to go low here let's just do like 15 munch of coins all right so danny burning varus is man i was so <laughs> i was so confident of this bet and now i feel like i'm the underdog here but whatever i'll take it <gasps> Just to be clear, so that you don't bitch and moan next episode. Does Danny kill Varys? Does Danny burn Varys? Kill? Oh, it's kill. Jesus! So she can like stick a sword in him. Yeah. Okay. If Danny orders Grey Worm to execute him, that's still Danny killing Varys. But she's gonna burn him. She's promised she will. Yeah, that's the whole point. Because either I lose it because she doesn't kill him, or I or she's gonna burn him. But All it's right. fine. Fifteen muncher coins. All right. Locked and loaded. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the other uh, Daenerys. potential treasonous counselor yeah where 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 do you stand on tyrion he's he's half there that's my wager does he remain loyal to daenerys or not okay what do you think oh i go first i think he does well he said he does and uh this is going to be a little vague possibly but but i think he does he might have some shenanigans but he's going to be on daenerys's side unlike varys 
So if you think eventually it boils down to a John versus Danny showdown, Tyrion's going to be on Danny's side? I think so, yeah. That's Why else did they establish it in episode four? Although Varys did say, like, it's for us to choose. So it's almost like they haven't chosen yet. Yeah, I think that scene was to foreshadow more of Varys' mindset as opposed to Tyrion. And the only thing they tried to establish from Tyrion's point of view in that scene was that he was hesitant. And I think that's more of a sort of personal affection towards Danny as opposed to who should be the ruler. So are you know on this? Um it's it's kind of tricky man because it might be vague, right? Like if I if we'll we'll make it a push if it's vague. Yeah, because you know think about a Danny John face off happening and then Tyrion there just trying to just trying to make everyone understand what the right side should be. Uh, so, okay, we'll make that a push even though I would call that remaining loyal to Daenerys. But uh you know, as as long as he doesn't literally do something he, against her, like he doesn't betray her, mm-hmm. I think that's that's a win for me. Well, you know, if if that's if that's how it is, then I actually side with you as well. I don't think he's going to betray betray her, like in terms of stabbing her in the back or or uh, m- like setting in or like setting in motion a series of events that pulling a Varys, basically. Yeah, he's not going to be Varys here, essentially. Okay, I think he has a lot of affection, personal affection for Danny, which won't allow his character to do that. Okay, no bet then. We're both on the side of Tyrion remaining loyal to Daenerys. What about Jon, man? Does he turn on Daenerys? Well, our last, uh, at least my last explanation relied heavily on that. Can we just take a moment and realize that we have 160 minutes of Game of Thrones left? And you know what? The creators are getting a lot of shit this season. And, you know, they should. a lot of it could be deserved. It's hard, dude. Come on. Like, how do you end the greatest show on the planet? Okay. Discussion later. But the fact that... We're quite confused about what happens next. It's a lot of credit to the creators, man. Even in Breaking Bad, if you remember, they had a great episode of Ozymandias, and then uh, Jesse gets captured. But we knew that Walter, and from the previews and stuff, that Walter's going to rescue Jesse somehow. Like, that was on the cards always, right? No, I don't think so, actually. You don't think so? I think the way the show was set up Breaking Bad, especially at that point of time, and where Walt's character was... It could have very easily gone either way. Because they hated each other so much. And and the way they closed it out was something completely unexpected. That's how you close out a good show. These guys are doing a piss poor job at it. But we don't know. But the fact that we don't know what's going to happen next. Yes, they made a mistake killing the Night King possibly. But it's pretty crazy, man. Like, I don't know if John's going to turn on Daenerys or not. I don't have a strong opinion. And that's pretty cool. Like, the two main characters might turn on each other and they've just given us enough foreshadowing to almost justify why might that happen. Dude, but then also think about this, that the way the show has been historically and whatever they've shown us up until now, right? And I I personally give all the credits to the books. Yeah, the other way. I mean, I meant John turning on Danny. This show, just because of its characters, the fantasy element and all, it just elicits a lot of questions from the audience. Therefore, the audiences ask these questions. The show's creators have nothing to do with this. Okay, but at least it's not predictable. I actually think John and Danny has become more of a predictable plot point now, especially given how Danny's character arc has been this season. I feel like she's slowly and slowly going crazy. Mad Queen. Mad Queen, yeah. She's just she's losing lost control. Everybody that she was close to. Lost all her subjects. She's not the she's not the queen we saw in Marine, right? And she's just power hungry for that throne. And given this Missandei death in the in the previous episode, I feel like she's just gonna or her plan is just gonna be to charge. And John given John's character might not be fine with that. So you think he's going to turn on her, basically? I feel like I feel like because because what Danny's character set up to be and to become, I feel like that's a big possibility. So I, I'm happy to take a yes here, but but it needs to be one of those bets that goes on till the next episode as well. So five and six. So the question is: Is it going to be Targaryen versus Targaryen? Yeah. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. I'm truly 50-50. And, and that's why I was going on this whole spiel about how it's unpredictable. Because I, I can't say whether John will turn on her. Like, what happened in their love? I guess, like, he still remained faithful to her. But he still wanted to tell his family. So, unfortunately, I, I'm going to have to go no bet here. Like, I think he might turn. At least during the next two episodes, he, he might turn on her. Because where else is the conflict going to come from? If it's just the two of them versus Cersei. And it's going to be driven by Danny. It's not going to be driven by John. John's going to be forced. To... John's the perfect guy. He never does yeah. anything that makes anybody turn on him. But then, just given what we've seen of Danny, we can totally see her just forcing that, oh, I'm your queen, and I'm going to kill these people. Otherwise, and he'd be like, otherwise what? Danny, 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. I can see it easily. And now that we are kind of both on the side, I kind of hope it doesn't happen just so that my expectations are a little subverted. Dude, you we way beyond that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I need to decide what I want from the show. But okay, no bet there. Uh I want to round out with a couple of bets. One of them we actually just spoke about, but I'll save that one. Can we talk about something we saw in the preview? Oh yeah, let's do it. You remember Euron looking up at the skies all confused and concerted and Slightly worried? Slightly scared, yeah. Slightly yeah, scared. Do. And we all expect Drogon to be coming from there. But clearly it's not Drogon, otherwise they won't show it. And they have the, he wouldn't be that scared if it's Drogon, right? Yeah, because he has like 30 like scorpions. Yeah, yeah. Also they have the Hans Zimmer tick, 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 tick behind, yeah. which works really well. I think it's something cool or like something completely... Like do you not think it's Drogon then? If it's Drogon, I'll be super pissed off, dude. Why? Because then why build it up? Yeah, if he if he sees two dragons and he just takes care of them effortlessly, and then one dragon's flying at him, why would he be so scared? You think it's like this uh, giant other dragon that's been waiting in the wings? Because I read a theory. I've yeah, I've 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 done some theory research here as well. You know what's going to be st- super stupid and which could be likely as well. Could be just imagine a scenario where his entire fleet's wiped out. He's the only ship left, and then Drogon comes, so he's super scared that. Drogon's going to engulf him. That If that happens, that'll be, again, very annoying. I, I'm assuming that he has his entire fleet. What if it's just like Tom Cruise in like a MiG-42? Just... Stop betting him? Yeah, yeah. I'd be scared of that. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to go for the Bizarre with this one? Okay. I Wait, we're both taking one guess? But it has to be Bizarre. What do you mean? I, why can't I just lock up some Muncha coins and guess Drogon? Well, I'm not going to take that bet then. Well, you just said you don't think it's Drogon. If you bet that it's going to be Drogon and you put some absurd Muncha coin value there, I'm not partaking. So. <laughs> okay, Good fine. Sir. What's your bizarre? You lead the way. Okay, my bizarre could be um, uh, uh, Bran warging a dragon, dead or alive. How about that? There's only one dragon left. A Bran to warging war. a dead dragon. That's that's how bizarre I mean. I'll bet you 100 Muncha coins <laughs> that it's not that. No, you can't go for not that. Come on. No. Come on. You think, this is you're getting stupid desperate now, bro. Okay. I am. I lost so much this episode. Okay. My bizarre bet then will be, it's like Drogon throwing his voice like a ventriloquist. But Drogon's actually sneaking up behind him. So it's actually <laughs> nothing. It's like the sun. And then Drogon just comes from the back. And how they do that, I'm sure Bran can figure something out, you know. You know what? Speaking of Bran, it could just be a a flock of 100,000 ravens. ravens. Oh, yeah. That, I like that, too. But you don't get to have that anymore because that's actually likely. Let's just do 50 Muncha coins. On? Your Let's do 100 Muncha coins. On your ventri- ventriloquist? If idea? you're right about any of this. <laughs> my ventriloquist, you have to give me some room here. And I'll give you some room with the Bran walking a dragon, too. Like, if it's, you know... It could be Rhaegal, it could be Viserion. Viserion's like super dead now, right? Who knows, man? Who knows with this show? Okay, let's just go 100 Muncha coins if you're right about any of this. It's so likely to be a push. Imagine if this is not a push, though. That'd be crazy. Yeah. You know what? I, I kind of feel very strongly about the brand with the 100,000 Raven. I'm not going 100 Muncha coins for that. That's actually a reasonable all right, bet. All right, wager aside, do you think that's... I think that's the most feasible, though. Like something brand If you is feel that way, in. I'll go 50 Muncha coins and you can wager that. But you're just going to go no against it? No, I'll, I'll still go with my ventriloquist. You give me two to one. <laughs> no, no. I'm good, I'm good. Let's just, let's just, I'm done. I think we're done with this bet. Okay. So just to, just to be clear, my wager is that Bran is going to be walking a dra- dragon, dead or alive. <laughs> and your wager is that they're somehow creating the dragon sounds to come from the side of the clouds. There's going to be nothing and a dragon is somewhere else, most likely behind. Okay, okay, 100 coins locked in. Okay, done. I want to get to the most important wager of all. Now, yeah. we just spoke for a while about where the show has been and where it might be headed. Yeah. This is an important one, Vikram. Okay. Will the creators, Dan and Dave, mm. choke in this episode? Oh, dude, uh, 100% yes. Really? Oh, this episode? This oh, episode. Oh, that changes it. I give a lot of credit to Miguel Sapochnik, that director we talk about. I think he's excellent, especially in terms of like these battle-based episodes. So... That next episode does not rely too much on D&D and the, the team overall and more on him. Wait, wait, wait. They choked in The Long Night and that was directed by him. That's a choke, right? I actually agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. Can That's you it, King like that is a choke for Will sure. Will the creators choke? Um, we'll know. We'll know if they choke. Just out of principle, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Okay. I Just out of principle, for a show that I've loved and followed, I will say no. I'm an optimist. And you know what? I'll go big with this. I won't. 
Why? Just because of the next episode. Because you think you said they'll choke. I I do think they'll choke overall. I'm Vikram. Even within the episode, you'll know if they choke. No, no. I I I don't doubt that it'll be clear that they choked or not. But my my emphasis on them choking was more of an overall season eight ending the Game of Thrones saga. I'm telling you, this is it. Just go big. No, nah, bro, no. Nah. And you know how the episodes have been progressing too. We might actually be able to easily back this up with data too, because the last episode, episode four, the last of the Starks, second lowest rated Game of Thrones episode ever. Hmm. Third lowest rated Game of Thrones episode, the Long Night, and the lowest spot is just taken up by like some shit episode from season five. Yeah, but this is this is you, me personally, just no, I, we're, we're always on the same love. page. So yeah, yeah. Will, will they choke? I, I'll do this for maybe thirty, not more. Come than on, that. dude. No, if you want, come on. If this... you want to make this a uh, uh, an episode five and six wager, I'll I'll go as big as you want. We'll do another one for episode six. No. Let's do fifty muncha coins. N- not if I'm reeling from a fifty loss, and then I, then you know I won't bet big. I'll just be conjuice about it. Okay, let's do fifty muncha coins. But if it is at all ambiguous, we'll. Take the bet forward to episode six. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. It won't be ambiguous. It'll be pretty clear that they choke. Yes or no? I find forty. Na teri na meri. No, no. I'll do fifty for two episodes if you want. No, let's just do thirty for the greatest choke. <laughs> okay, that was easy. No, I don't want them to choke, and I want to get something well, when they don't. Why do you make me sound like a heartless ass? No, you're, you're hedging your enjoyment, whereas I'm doubling down on my I'm enjoyment. Not he- you mean I'm hedging my non-enjoyment? Or my disappointment. No, hedging means like either you enjoy the episode or you win 30 Muncha coins. Me, I want to enjoy the episode and win 30 Muncha coins. Okay. Best of luck to you, man. I hope that happens. Sincerely, I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones, the universe. So I don't want them to choke. But just sadly, like the way they've been doing this season and in fact, a lot of the last season as well. I think they're going to choke, dude. Baski in here. Good luck, D&D. Don't let me down. 30 Muncha coins on the line. All right. So that wraps our wages for episode five. It's pretty interesting. We have quite a few. I think we have like about eight or nine wagers going for us. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'll be watching with a keen eye, which I always do. I'm I'm most excited about that bizarre what's your on looking at wager. Me too, of course. If either one of us comes through that. 100, baby. Genius, dude. Genius. And that's 100 I'd be more than happy to give you, honestly. If I'm right. (laughs) (laughs) If I nailed it. Yeah. Okay, great. That wraps up our wagers. And you, the listeners, don't forget to place your own wagers. Any position that we've taken, you can always take the opposite position and we'll be happy to wager with you. You can write to us in the comments or on our social media at Muncha Movies. Let us know what wagers you want to make and we'll keep track of them for you. Until next time. Bye-bye. Until next time. Bye-bye. Until next time. Bye-bye. Until next.